Welcome to the presentation, Enhancing DIY Musical Instruments with Custom Circuit Boards. My name is Andrew Brown, uh, my co-author is John Ferguson. We're from Griffith University in Brisbane, Australia. Our presentation explores the use of bespoke printed circuit boards, or are sometimes called PCBs for short, for enhancing DIY making of electronic sound devices. With tools and manufacturing costs now within reach of amateur makers, the production of PCBs for DIY projects can add stability and reproducibility to the growing number of custom instruments used in ubiquitous music projects. We discuss the impact of maker culture on the custom development of these electronic musical instruments and how incorporating PCB design can extend these developments. We illustrate our presentation using our own projects as case studies and conclude by outlining lessons from these experiences that may assist other DIY makers. To put this in concrete terms, this is a PCB um, which we've designed and it results um, in this instrument, the MIDI controller and monophonic synthesizer, which we'll discuss in more detail later on. The making of DIY instruments has a long history. Music composers in the 20th century began to turn to every eight objects for music making. Examples of this include John Cage's use of paper, screws and other objects for prepared piano works, and his use of radios, watering cans and kitchen appliances as sound sources. Since the 1990s, the DIY movement in electronic music making has adapted arts and craft approaches to working directly with materials for the making of sound devices and new instruments. These activities have benefited from a broader range of reducing costs for small run electronics. And the accessible production of custom PCBs is part of that trend. DIY electronic music tends to focus on live music making using handmade instruments. Often these are noisy or lo-fi, partly out of necessity given the materials that are available, but this has often become a deliberate aesthetic choice and a stylistic consideration. As technologies have improved and costs have reduced, the devices made by DIY music makers have expanded in sophistication and musical scope. The access to small run PCB manufacturing is another step in this evolution. In recent years, the process of having custom printed circuit boards manufactured has become more accessible with open source tools and inexpensive production of small runs. These developments bring the process within the reach of DIY electronic music makers PCB production built upon prior development steps that are already part of a DIY audio electronic workflow. Software based prototypes are often a starting point for instrument development. They have then typically prototyped on solderless breadboards with components later soldered together for use in workshops and performances. The reliability of handmade devices made through these processes is quite variable, depending on the engineering skills of the maker. We've found that the use of custom PCBs has made our DIY instruments more reliable for performance, and construction in maker workshops has been easier and faster. The manufacturing of PCBs for electronic music is not new. PCBs were used in the earliest commercial synthesizers from the 1970s, and one look at the prevalence of modular synthesizer components, each of which has a PCB, shows their commercial ubiquity. There is even a strong hobbyist market in the design and distribution of PCBs for music devices, on sites such as SynthCube and Nonlinear Circuits, and by organisations such as Dirty Electronics. Like many technologies, the printing of circuit boards has recently become much more refined and inexpensive, although it's still not trivial. A range of low-cost tools and services has made this accessibility possible. Free software for PCB designs includes Fritzing and KiCad. DIY makers may already be using Fritzing for designing or documenting breadboard electronics, and these projects can be extended to PCB design as well. 
KiCAD is an open source project for designing schematics and circuit boards. It's a bit more complex than Fritzing, but has also more features. The applications of KiCAD and Eagle were used in the case study examples in this article. Having designed the PCB using software tools, these can be exported to Gerber files for sending to a professional PCB manufacturing service. These services include PCBWay in China, uh, Oshpark in the USA, Eisla in Germany and many more. Production and shipping from these manufacturers typically takes about two weeks. There are many online resources to assist with undertaking the process of PCB design and manufacture. While a full tutorial is well beyond the scope of this presentation, here are a few of the basic steps involved. Number one, prototype the project on a breadboard. Number two, draw a schematic in software. Number three, use the schematic to design a PCB layout. Number four, route connections between components and establish a ground plane. Five, export Gerber files. Six, upload those files to a PCB manufacturer and place an order. And finally, solder the components onto the delivered PCB. Now it's time for us to talk about some of our exemplar projects. To illustrate what is possible, we will describe three examples of music projects that we've made and taken through to the stage of PCB design and build. The first is the Sonic Frisbee. The Sonic Frisbee is a six voice portable and battery powered synthesizer based around a CMOS Hexschmitt trigger and an LM386 amplifier. There's no computer involved. This makes for a very low cost instrument overall. It's designed to be improvising in real time and used in performance. And the PCB is designed to facilitate handheld interaction and gestural freedom. Three of the synthesizer voices are operated via resistive touch on the MuTeC lettering where there is a physical gap in the signal path of each voice and the oscillation only occurs when the gap is bridged. This element of the instrument is performed using fingers to touch metal pads so electrical circuitry flows across the gap and human flesh becomes part of the circuit. The result is a tactile but unpredictable relationship between human input and sonic output given that it's difficult to perform exact pitches but the sonic response to touch is instant. The remaining three voices are either controlled by a light dependent resistor or a potentiometer. Sonic output is switchable between a mono jack socket on the rear and the onboard amplifier or speaker. Power is provided by a 9 volt battery that clips onto a socket at the rear. This also makes the instrument stable and sets the slit angle towards the performer when used as a desktop instrument. A significant advantage of the PCB design for this instrument, rather than an alternative DIY method of laser cutting a box or having a solderable bed breadboard, was the combination of neatness and compact design. The wiring is quite complex and the PCB requires a compact product and it helps us make that easily manipulatable in live performance without the risk of wiring disconnections. The second example is the beat machine. The beat machine is a 16 step sequencer with three voice synthesizer controlled by 10 potentiometers, 19 buttons and an accelerometer. The beat machine is designed to be handheld like the Sonic Frisbee, but can also be operated resting on a tabletop. The PCB facilitates a lightweight design that is compact enough to operate in the hands and movement oriented features such as an accelerometer control parameters encouraging expressive gestural performance. The controls are connected to two Arduino Pro Micro microcontrollers that communicate with each other via I2C communications. One microcontroller handles the sequencing and the other functions as a synthesizer using the Mozzie library. There are three layers of control, one for each voice. 
Low cost textile switches are used to enter step sequences and to access the various layers of control. A ring of programmable LEDs indicates the sequence pattern and layering information so that users can, can see where the voices are and which sounds are being used at any particular time. The Beat Machine has been used in our teaching and some videos of the Beat Machine produced by our students describe how it works. This is the Feral Technology Beat Machine version 0.3. We have the on and off switch on the bottom left and the amp on and off switch on the bottom right. The start and stop button is at the top left. This sequencer has 16 steps with buttons all around it which will turn the steps on or off. There are three different voices to choose from. The coloured lights depict voice and active steps. Each voice contains of two different oscillators. You can use a noise or saw sound for the second oscillator of your selected voice. A significant learning for us from the development of the Beat Machine PCB was the need for attention to power circuit design. The combination of NeoPixel LEDs and audio running on the Arduino microcontroller led to disruptions and audio cross-talk from power fluctuations. The PCB design enabled parallel power circuits and distributed decoupling capacitors throughout the board to keep sensitive and power-hungry elements apart. The third example is the micro-mono control. During COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020, some of our music students needed an inexpensive MIDI controller to control their music study, to do their music studies remotely. This prompted the design of the Micro Mono Control, or the MMC, the components for which cost around $20 US. The MMC is a MIDI controller with onboard monophonic synthesis capability. The MMC can be operated at rest on the desktop or held in the hands like a game controller. Several continuous controllers, a joystick, light sensitive resistor and accelerometer, encourage real-time gestural interaction. The MMC sends continuous control messages and MIDI note on and off messages. The MMC includes a monophonic subtractive synthesizer and an arpeggiator modified using onboard controls or via external MIDI input. It's driven by an Arduino Pro Micro microcontroller running the USB MIDI and Mozzie libraries. It can be USB powered or run from batteries. The use of a PCB for the MMC enabled it to be both lightweight and robust. The fact that the board also acted as a case, especially for the joystick, minimized the number of fabricated parts that were required. Doubling down on featuring the PCB, the decision was made to go with a black colored PCB, which looked a bit more finalized and polished than the typical green or red PCBs that were um, more often used in the past. The design of PCBs for an instrument is a task that requires a solid background in breadboard prototyping. Software applications such as KiCad include useful default settings that minimize decisions and provide tools to check for the validity of circuits. Nevertheless, the PCB design is a process we somewhat abstract and it's best grounded in an understanding of breadboard prototyping. Learning about PCB design processes and software can take time, but it's rewarded with neat and robust infrastructure for novel electronic instruments. Iteration and mistakes are inevitable and need to be considered as part of the design process. Printing PCB designs on paper for checking against component fit is a useful strategy to locate issues before manufacturing. 
So in conclusion, we've outlined in this presentation a case for the addition of small run PCB production as a viable addition to existing DIY electronic music making activities, particularly for the use in UBMUS contexts. PCB design and manufacturing seem to us like the next step of skills for those who are looking to move beyond breadboard based methods for making DIY electronic musical instruments. Thanks for your attention.